Good morning and welcome to the second meeting in 2017 of the Standards, Procedures and Public Appointments Committee. Can I remind everyone to please switch mobile phones and electronic devices off or to silent? The first agenda item today is um, a decision on taking business in private. Uh, are the members content to take consideration its work programme in private at the next meeting? Thank you very much. Our second agenda item today is cross-party groups. And we are taking evidence in four proposed cross-party groups today. The first group to consider is proposed CPG on sexual health and bloodborne viruses. And I would welcome Kezia Dugdale, MSP, to the meeting. Uh, Kezia is the co-convener of the proposed group and I'd invite you to make an opening statement. Thank you, convener, and good morning. I must say this is more nerve-wracking than First Minister's questions, <laughs> so please be gentle. Um, I'm here to propose a cross-party group on sexual health and bloodborne viruses. Uh, there is currently no other cross-party group looking specifically at, at these issues. I think there's a clear demand for it when you look at uh, the increasing uh, number of cases of HIV in Scotland. There's been no decline in the trend over the past 10 years. There's 5,200 people in Scotland living with HIV. And separately, hepatitis C remains a persistent issue across the country with in excess of 35,000 people living with the condition, many of them unaware that they have it. So I think um, there's a lot of work we can do in this area. There would be some overlap with other cross-party groups. There's clearly um, similarities uh, with some of the issues that, for example, the cross-party group on health inequalities might be looking at, uh, and indeed uh, some of the work that the cross-party group on LGBTI issues would be looking at, uh, which I'm also a, a member of. But I think there's enough within the programme, more than enough within the programme, to demand or justify a specific cross-party group, not least um, the rising issue of sexual health education and whether or not it should be compulsory within our curriculum. Um, issues around sexual coercion and violence, digital health, pregnancy. Uh, we know that the Scottish Government is about to come forth shortly with a, a whole new sexual health and bloodborne virus framework. So there's uh, obvious landmarks in, in the months and years ahead which the cross-party group um, could work around. So... Um, Members will be aware of the pro forma that we put forward that shows a wide ranging number of organisations and groups that are keen to participate in this cross party group. We've had a, a very welcome offer uh, from the Terence Higgins Trust to provide the secretariat. And you'll also be aware, convener, that, that two members of your own committee here are also signed up to be uh, prospective conveners of that work. So I'm sure they will diligently commit themselves to this task as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bill. Are there any questions from? Committee members, yes, Mr. Alexander and Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Uh, I think, as you rightly say, there's a, a real demand for this situation, no question about that. The groups and organisations that you've listed here, uh, they have got massive uh, experience uh, in the field. Uh, how are you, how, with having so many experts uh, supporting you, how are you going to manage to progress that forward uh, to ensure that, you know, that it doesn't get taken over by one or two of the organisations uh, in the way that they want to promote it and, and move it forward. Because I think for everybody, uh, there's a commonality in it, uh, but it's important that it, it is progressed. Convene, that's a, a very fair question. At our first meeting where we uh, contemplated the steps to establish a cross-party group. Many of the organisations listed on that form were in attendance. In fact, we had over 60 organisations or, or individuals representing organisations uh, at the first meeting. Uh, and the approach to that that I took from the chair was to have as open and discursive a first meeting as we possibly could, giving everybody the opportunity to put forward um, their individual priorities from their organisation's perspective about what they would like the cross-party group to work on. Uh, we collated all of that and it was very clear, having written that all down in one piece of paper, that there were some common themes. I think there, um, there's a legitimate uh, concern within the group that uh, given there are so many organisations working in the field of HIV, that HIV might become uh, more dominant than some of the issues around hepatitis C. But I think that's um, something that we can easily manage as a, a cross-party group of conveners to make sure that the work programme reflects the priorities and the demands of all of the groups involved. Thank you. Thank you, convener. Mr Johnson. I mean, I think the first thing is it's not often that your own party leader comes before you on a committee. So there's just one or two things I'd like to get off my chest. Um, and no, in all seriousness, I think that it's very important, certainly in the discussions I've had with Waverley Care, uh, and I have uh, Milestone House in, in my constituency, I think the, the issues around bloodborne viruses, HIV in particular, I think are quite pronounced. I was quite shocked to hear that actually it's my demographic which is at most at risk because the rising uh, kind of... Uh, 
complacency and other issues which are around those issues. So I think I think the the, the case for the, the group is well made. I think one thing that I, I, I think we're all aware of in this group, in, in this committee is that there's quite a large number of uh, CPGs, both existing and new, focusing on health issues. Um, how do you see kind of this group working collaboratively, collaboratively, if I could speak properly, um, uh, with other groups um, and actually using, you know, using the, the multitude of different interests in, in a kind of a, 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 a way to develop opportunities? There's I mean, two things to say about that. We, we did have a, a cross-party group on sexual health and uh, BBV in the last parliament that myself and Patrick were co-conveners of. And it, it worked fairly effectively for the first two years of the, the five-year parliament, as I remember it. And then uh, the, the rules around the number mm. of cross um, parties involved in a cross-party group changed and we were unable to attract enough cross-party support to keep its work going, despite um, a lot, there being substantial issues to discuss, which is why I think it's very important and relevant that the proposal you have before you sees a cross-party yeah. uh, representation from four different political parties, which I think will uh, continue um, the impetus in that regard. In terms of the other discussions we've had around work programme, we have talked about doing joint meetings with other cross-party groups. If you take an issue like compulsory sex education, there's clear correlation there between uh, what we would like to discuss as the cross-party group on sexual health and some of the priorities that, for example, the cross-party group on children and young people might be working on. Uh, and I convene that as well. <laughs> so <laughs> there are um, lots of common ground. Uh, equally, um, the cross-party group on drugs and alcohol, I believe, is yeah. being re-established and there's some commonality there as well. So I just think um, by having... Uh, open discussions, uh, uh, clear priorities uh, and a definitive work programme, we can both have our own defined agenda within the Parliament but also seek to work with other cross-party groups that have been long established. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mr Harvey. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much and uh, very happy to be involved just so that uh, members are aware uh, uh, in the, the, the CPG, very happy that it's going to be created again. Um, during the, the first sexual health CPG in session two, there were some opportunities to work with the uh, international development CPG, uh, particularly around how uh, sexual and reproductive health and rights as well as HIV uh, are dealt with at a global level. I, I just wonder whether uh, there's the, the chance for, for some of that work to, to be done again between the two groups, particularly with current events, obviously refresh of the Scottish Government's international development strategy, mm -hmm. but also the US threatening to withdraw funding from uh, any organisations involved in, in sexual and reproductive health, particularly around contraception and abortion. I think uh, when you look at um, how well attended uh, and how thorough the recent debate, uh, members debate that we had in the Parliament on World AIDS Day was, when you had that mix of both domestic and international issues in the context of World AIDS, World AIDS Day raised, I think it's quite clear that there's an appetite in the Parliament to not just look at what's happening at home but look abroad uh, on these issues too. From the early discussions we've had as a cross-party group, actually collaboration with the cross-party group on international development didn't come up on that one occasion, but there are quite clear and obvious uh, developments since we first met that put that higher up the priority list. Again, that's something for the members of the cross-party group to demand and determine. Thank you. Um, Ms Hawking? Thank you, convener. Um, uh, I believe you to be commended for, for setting up this uh, CPG. I think it's uh, certainly... Um, uh, very very uh, merited within the Parliament. One of the uh, areas uh, where there's been a huge growth in sexually transmitted diseases is in the over 50s. And I see here there's, there's uh, uh, paediatric and adolescent uh, groups and you've been talking about education and, and uh, contraception, um, which may not uh, so much affect pregnancy and, and so may not so much affect the over 50s. Is, has there been any thought put into how you would engage that demographic or what groups you might invite to come along who might represent that age group? Uh, LGBT health and wellbeing um, actually do some work in this area with regards to people living with HIV uh, because of course the advancement in medicine means that many people can live well for much longer so there is a growing group of people in the over 50 category who are exposed to HIV and BBV or are living with that condition and uh, those issues were um, put on our list of priorities at the first meeting and um, it's fair to say that it, it wasn't in the top five but, but it very much was on that list so there's scope to do uh, more work in that area mm -hmm. uh, just is uh, Waverly Care are actively involved in this. You heard Daniel mention Milestone House. Uh, again, um, Waverly Care work in the area of um, the ageing population. Uh, again, that I guess in the future that's something that um, we could do joint work with the CPG on 
uh, older people, I think is the, the specific group. But at the moment, that's not considered high up the list, but we're very much open to that. It's worth saying um, that one of the other issue, issues that was raised at the first meeting of the cross-party group was the degree to which the list of participants was exhaustive. People were asking, you know, how do we advertise the cross-party mm -hmm. group? How do we make sure that everybody who might have an interest in these issues knows that it exists and knows how to participate in it? I think you've probably identified an area where we could do a bit more work to make sure that those people living in older communities do know that it's there and it could represent their interests as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any further questions from the committee? Well, um, can I thank uh, Ms. Dugdale for attendance? I think um, from the question we've established, this is, this is an issue that affects all demographics and um, is important to everyone in Scotland. But we will make our deliberation at Agenda Item 3 today and you'll be informed of our decision as quickly as possible. So thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, suspend so shortly, just allow witnesses to change over. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, the second group for consideration by the committee this morning is a proposed CPG on architecture and the built environment. I would like to welcome Linda Fabiani, MSP, to the meeting. Uh, Linda is a proposed convener of this group, and I would invite Ms Fabiani to make an opening statement. Uh, thank you very much, convener. Um, the cross-party group in architecture and the built environment is one that has sustained since the very beginning of this parliament. Um, and I, right up front, we'll say... Um, it should have been easy, but we missed the deadline, uh, hence I'm here today. Um, the, the purpose of the group is a recognition of uh, Scotland's places. It brings together um, planners, uh, architects, surveyors, and everyone that's involved in Scotland's built environment. It's been very, very successful. We've always had a good membership and um, we have a broad range of stakeholders who regularly come along to our meetings from which we produce reports that are then circulated to all MSPs. Um, over the piece we've been involved, for example, in last year's uh, Festival of Architecture, um, we engage with government and uh, all stakeholders involved whenever there are government consultations. And it's always about promoting good spaces uh, for people to live and work in in Scotland. Thank you, Ms. Fabiani. Um, can I invite any questions from the committee? Mr. Johnson? So I'd just like to make a comment. I think our, our built environment is very important. And I think the kind of the esteem which architecture is held, I think, is, is, is equally important. I mean, I guess I'll, I'll take this opportunity to. Yeah, uh, a personal hobby horse of mine, which I mean, I think there's there's a, a bit of work to be done on making sure that that kind of mid 20th century architecture is is kind of slightly elevated in its steam. Mm -hmm. You know, I still lament the loss of um, the the Scottish Provident building on the, the corner of St Andrew's Square, which I thought was a remarkable building and is sadly lost to us mainly because it was built in the in the wrong decade uh, for, for for many people. I think it was a, a, an older building we'd have protected it. And I'm just wondering if there was any thought in your work programme as to sort of looking at, at kind of mid-20th mid, mid uh, 20th century architecture, brutalist mm -hmm. architecture, and, and actually how we can change mm -hmm. perceptions of uh, uh, those buildings. That is something that comes up fairly often because, yeah. because you're absolutely right. There's not often a recognition of um, how excellent architecture is um, in the modern context. Um, I mean, even uh, you know where our parliament is situated here, we have um, you know some very very excellent, more modern work just across the road uh, in the Basil Spence flats, for example, that aren't really recognised as being excellent architecture. So that's a, an ongoing thing, and yes, uh, we do try to promote this too. For example, as part of the uh, year of architecture, there was Scotland's hundred favourite places, and it was quite uplifting actually to see that people have started to recognise more modern structures 
as, you know, architecturally brilliant. And in fact, there was two in East Kilbride, I may just say, while I'm here, <laughs> one being the Dolan Baths. Um, so yes, that's an, that's an ongoing issue, and that's very much part of the remit of the group, is about the appreciation of how important it is to have decent, good places, you know, within our built environment, and indeed in our, our landscapes, uh, because it, it covers more uh, than just look at all these buildings yeah. and, and where they're at. So you're absolutely right, and can I suggest that perhaps you come along to our group and put your point forward? I may well do that. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Scott? Um, declaring a slight interest as my degree was in engineering, do you invite engineers, civil engineers, along to your group, um, given the, <laughs> the natural tensions that exist um, by way of... It, excuse excuse my smile. I, I didn't mean anything worse than, you know, having been involved in the construction industry myself and developing housing. The minute you said an engineer was coming to the meeting, you thought, oh, no, here we go. <laughs> 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 Sorry about that. I, I, that, <laughs> that, that, that. That makes my point for me. <laughs> Absolutely. And, but and yes, an inclusive nature, I'm sure the committee will to It's a very inclusive pursue. group. And um, I mean, we have had interaction, for example, um, with the cross-party group for construction, uh, right. you know, over the periods um, that the two groups were in operation. Um, I, I, I'm pretty sure that there are engineering organisations in the membership list, um, or where, uh, last time round. But I have to be very honest and say, I don't think we had much attendance from that section of it. But um, yeah, I'll very much take that on board and I shall um, perhaps bully the architects into being more proactive about <laughs> inviting engineers. Um, are there any further questions from the committee? Uh, thank you very much. Um, can I thank uh, Linda Fabiani for her attendance this morning and um, I'd like to, to recognise your passion and your commitment to this, this area over the years of the Parliament. Um, however, we will take our final decision at Agenda Item 3 and you'll be informed of the decision regarding the proposed cross-party group. But thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you morning. very much. I'll suspend shortly to allow witnesses to change over. Thank you. The third group for the committee's consideration this morning is a proposed cross-party group on Nordic countries. I'd welcome to the committee Morris Golden, MSP, and I would like to invite Mr Golden to make an opening statement about the proposed group. So the, the overall objective of the uh, Nordic uh, countries uh, cross-party group is to promote political, cultural, educational and environmental links between Scotland and the Nordic countries and to foster ties between Scotland, Scottish and Nordic politicians. Um, as you can see from the submission, we have uh, achieved uh, cross-party uh, support for the group. Uh, I have also met with the relevant uh, consuls uh, for um, uh, the Nordic uh, nations, which were uh, defining uh, for avoidance of, of doubt as uh, Iceland, Finland, uh, Norway, Sweden and Denmark. And uh, they are uh, very keen uh, to, to see the establishment of uh, this cross-party group. I've also spoken uh, to uh, relevant uh, societies as well as uh, 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 businesses linked to those uh, nations operating in Scotland. Thank you very much. Can I invite any questions from the committee this morning? Mr Alexander? Mr Stewart, sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Convener. Uh, there are already a number of great ties already between uh, Scotland and Nordic countries, especially in trade and culture. Uh, but specifically within the report, you talk about the sort of digital economy. Uh, how do you engage and how are you going to progress that uh, to ensure that you can capture all that? Because we are advanced in, in some aspects, but they're even more advanced. 
uh, than, than ourselves. I, I mean, I think uh, it's a very good point. There's uh, an opportunity within uh, this cross-party group, and it's probably something that needs clarified, is that we will seek to address a, a whole range uh, of issues, in, including the digital economy, and where possible link with other cross-party groups who maybe have uh, a specific focus on the theme, whether it be connectivity, whether it be health, um, whether it be renewables and we will s seek to uh, link up because obviously when you're dealing with a, a geographical region rather than a, a thematic issue then we obviously want uh, synergies um, for uh, parliamentarians and other interested stakeholders so we'll we'll seek to tackle those but I, I genuinely think it will be a, a two-way learning process there's, there's much that Scotland does um, where um, our nation is leading the way and, and vice versa so we can learn where, where those respective nations are, are doing some interesting and innovative projects. Thank you, Convener. Thank you. Um, Ms Hockey? Thank you, Convener. Um, a note from your application that uh, you have two individuals uh, noted as, as members of the group, um, the Honorary Consul of Finland and uh, a member of MSP staff. Um, but you said that you've reached out to other consuls. So I wonder perhaps if you could tell us why they haven't been listed as members of the group. Um, I think that's purely in terms of who attended the, the initial meeting of the, the cross-party group and in terms of the formalisation of the uh, process. I think after today it will bring uh, a confidence about the, the other consuls uh, formalising their engagement. I think... Uh, as members uh, may appreciate uh, the concept of a cross-party group to, to stakeholders out with is, is, is something that they may uh, certainly weren't aware of. Um, the, but I think once we have uh, established that, I would expect uh, membership to, to increase and to get more engagement. I think the other aspect, particularly with this group, is that there are a number of honorary consuls, so people who are effectively doing um, a, a full-time job and then have this uh, position uh, uh, on them uh, thereafter. So I think the other aspect of, of this process is to uh, reach out to the relevant embassies um, who will then provide uh, the authority to, to join. So I expect membership to, to increase. So can I ask then where the drive for this cross-party group has come from? Because we often hear that it's outside organisations who, who are, are, are lobbying MSPs to say we would like a group on this, this is really interesting. Or So where, where does the drive come from this if there's only one honorary consul from Finland as a member? Well, I think uh, the drive, I mean, from, from me personally, I, prior to uh, entering Parliament, and it's referred to my de declaration of interest. I did a project with the Chartered Institute of Waste Management looking at the application of the circular economy in similar nations to Scotland. As part of that study, I spent uh, a significant amount of time in Finland and in Denmark and realised that there's actually much we can learn from them. Take district heating for an example. Um, but uh, for members more widely, uh, in Parliament, uh, Angus MacDonald has a keen interest in, in uh, Norway, has, has lived in Norway, and uh, through uh, discussions with him, we realised there's actually much that can be learnt from this sort of um, discussion. So I think it's uh, one of the cases where the cross-party group has been led by the members, which I think is an entirely uh, appropriate. And uh, that's, that's why the, the, the consuls are therefore uh, coming on board with the, the relevant uh, members of the Scottish Parliament. Okay. And, and one final question, yes. Camina, if I may. Um, just about the plans that you have to reach out to organisations. This is no organisations are currently members of the CPG. Yes, I mean, we've uh, the, the obvious uh, organisation uh, to meet, which discussed at the uh, initial uh, cross-party group uh, meeting would be uh, Nordic Horizons. There's other other uh, stakeholders, society groups that we'd also like to to meet with, as well as uh, relevant uh, businesses and chambers of commerce uh, for those nations that we uh, still, um, uh, as a as a group, will uh, seek to meet meet with um, with uh, with myself and uh, the other uh, deputy conveners. will will seek to to speak to those groups as well. Thank you. 
Any further questions, Ms. Harvey? No. Uh, in the list of the, the countries that you're identifying as, as Nordic countries, uh, you mentioned the, the full members of the Nordic Council. There are other countries which are observer members, mm -hmm. and I wondered whether the CPG intends to establish some kind of relationship with the Nordic Council. I think that would be uh, definitely beneficial. I think, there, as you point out, there are uh, other interested uh, parties uh, within uh, within the wider Nordic region, and I think that would be uh, entirely appropriate, and we are flexible enough to accommodate that as well. I mean, I think going forward, we would like to see um, the relevant uh, Nordic countries uh, leading discussions on particular areas, and we've discussed with them about some of the particular subject areas that they would uh, like to lead on, and uh, also link in with um, the ambassadors as and when uh, they uh, come to Scotland. Thank you. Everyone, thank you very much. Um, thank you for your attendance this morning, Mr. Golden. Can I, I, I just say that um, I, I think as a committee, we're delighted we're not looking at five or six CPGs on individual countries. <laughs> so congratulations on uh, uh, bringing this together. And as someone who's attended a, num a number of the Nordic Horizons events over um, mm -hmm. the course of my term, the last term of the parliament, uh, it's certainly something that is of interest to the people and the members in, in this, this area. However, we will be taking our decision at agenda item three of today's committee and you'll be informed of our decision as soon as possible. So thank you for your attendance this morning. Thank you for Let's your time. suspend shortly just to allow witnesses to change over. Thank you. Um, our final group for the committee's consideration this morning is a proposed CPG on walking, cycling and buses. And I would like to welcome Graeme Simpson, MSP, uh, this morning. And I would invite Mr Simpson to make an opening statement to the committee. Um, yes, uh, I think I'll just uh, speak from the heart if, uh, rather than uh, from notes, um, if that's OK. Um, but So before I became a, an MSP, um, um, I uh, was uh, described as the cycling czar for South Lanarkshire. Um, we, we set up there um, a cycling partnership. Um, in fact, I still hold that position. So when I became an MSP, I was very keen to see if there was a, a similar sort of group in, in, in the Parliament. Um, asking around, I discovered that there, that there had been um, in the, the previous session. It just dealt with cycling. Uh, and I believe Alison Johnson uh, and Claudia Beamish were uh, were the conveners. So uh, got chatting to them. Um, where we are now, it's been quite a long time coming. Uh, there was a feeling that the, the group before uh, was probably, to be fair, a bit of a talking shop. And, and so we wanted to make it, make it uh, something a bit better. Um, in discussions, we thought, it, this isn't just about cycling, uh, it's about sustainable transport. Um, so we've widened the remit to, as you can see, include walking uh, and buses. Um, so I think the, uh, the idea is that uh, we, we just want to, you know, get, get this out there, get this on the agenda, um, publicise it, um, uh, you know, and, and get, it, get it in front of, uh, you know, the, pu the public agenda. And that's the idea, but it will not be a talking shop. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr Johnson, yeah, certainly. So, I mean, first of all, I think that it is very worthwhile having a CPG that looks at alternative forms of transport, sustainable transport, and indeed active transport. I, I just really wanted to ask you about the remit, though. I mean, while I understand why you want to extend beyond cycling, yeah. you, you seem to be being somewhat selective in the, 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 the additional modes of transport. Um, I, I, I'm just wondering why you chose to identify cycling, walking and, and buses rather than, you, and in fact you used the, the term sustainable transport, which I yeah. might better reflect the, the broad spectrum of modes of transport that you might be 
looking at? Yeah, I think I think that's a fair uh, question, Mr. Johnson. But I understand there is a group on rail already, um, so that's why we didn't include rail. It, I, I, I guess it would have been obvious to include rail as well, but I think uh, a group already exists, so that's why we limited it to cycling, walking, and buses. Uh, and, and just, and I know the the organisations that you have as as members, and there's a, a wide number of uh, groups um, and, and, and voluntary organisations, but I do also notice that you have a stagecoach here. And just obviously there, there's a, uh, immediately a kind of alerts to the, the, the possibilities of kind of commercial interest uh, g given their, their, their scope. And I just wonder what thought had been given to that. Um, I, th I think you can't avoid the fact that, that there are commercial operators who, who run buses. Um, you know, in large parts of Scotland, um, certainly the part that I live in, um, that's just the reality. So it would be, I would think, remiss if we didn't invite them along. Um, but that, that, you know, that I, th I think that group of organisations will grow uh, because you see, as, as, you, as you can see, it's quite cycle orientated uh, because of the people who were on it before. Um, so I do think it needs to be expanded. I, I, I mean, I think that the, the, the range of organisations is is uh, commendable. Um, it's just that, that, and I don't disagree that there, there clearly are commercial operators operating buses. That is a fact of the landscape. But it's more the question that you only have one of them here, um, and I, I just wonder whether or not that that needs to be looked at. Have other bus operators been in, invited? Could they be invited? Did a sort of a, a, a trade body rather than the individual commercial interest itself being a member of the group, might that be a, 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 a sort of a better way to proceed? Is it there? Sorry, I missed. Sorry, so happy to do that. No. No, I think it's a fair point. As I say, it's not you know the, the, that that list that you see before you uh, is not the end of it. Um, so yes. Um, I, I'll take, take that on board and would agree with it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Mr Stewart. I think very laudable that you're trying to expand the, the remit from just cycling, walking and buses. Uh, but, and that gives you lots of opportunities, uh, but it will also give you some challenges, uh, uh, especially maybe potentially with the bus situation, uh, because you may find, uh, as you indicate within your own area and also my own area, we have a large number of, of buses uh, that are operated. But from time to time, it gets a little bit difficult when some of them are streamlined or reduced uh, and communities then feel that they're being uh, left. Uh, so I, I wonder how you're going to manage to tackle that because that's bound to come onto the agenda uh, as you move forward. I think, uh, Mr Stewart, there is a, a sort of di di different situations in different parts of Scotland. Mm -hmm. and, and so, uh, I mean, if you take Edinburgh, for instance, my. I think my view of Edinburgh is it appears to have a very good bus service. Um, uh, other parts of Scotland don't. Mm. Um, so I would think it would be uh, part of the role of our group to perhaps shine a light on that uh, and maybe come up with suggestions for improving things in other parts of the country. Yep. As I say, I think there will be some real opportunities from it, Convena, and I wish you well. Thank you. Are there any further questions? Yeah, that's OK. Yeah. Thank you, Convener. Can I just ask, that, particularly as you brought up the subject of Edinburgh, had you thought about including trams in the uh, the CPG uh, membership list? Um, we haven't discussed it, but now you've mentioned it, it might be might be a thought. Thank you. Any further questions? Thank you, committee. Can I thank Mr. Simpson for his attendance? at the committee this morning. Um, I think it's probably worth putting on record for all committee, uh, all proposed CPGs that as their um, CPGs grow, that they um, have a duty to inform the clerks um, of increasing membership um, within a 30-day period. And I think that's um, probably relevant for all the C yeah. proposed CPGs that have been in front of us today. And um, our final decision will be taken at agenda item three today. And you'll be informed of our decision as quickly as possible. But thank you for your attendance okay. this morning. And thank you.
We now move to uh, agenda item three, which is consideration of the pros, proposed CPGs. Um, the first one being the proposed CPG on sexual health and bloodborne viruses. Um, can I have um, any comments from the committee? Are the committee content to approve that CPG? Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Noted, Mr. Scott. Thank you very much. Um, the next proposed CPG is, is on architecture and the built environment. And again, do any comments from the committee? Are we content to approve that CPG? Thank yeah. you very much. Um, the third proposed CPG is on Nordic countries. And again, I invite any comments from the committee? No, are we content to approve that CPG? Oh, Miss yeah. Hockey, sorry. I think. Uh, in from previous CPGs that we have approved, we've asked them when they've been a very small or narrow membership to come back to us in, in a year, I think, mm -hmm. am I correct in that? And I, I, looking at the membership list, I think this, the Nordic CPG would perhaps fall under that criteria we've already set. I think um, uh, that I would be happy to concur that this the same um, wording is used to that CPG. Thank you very much. And finally, the proposed CPG on walking, cycling and buses. Is everyone any comments or content? To, oh, Mr Johnson. I'd just, I'd just like to make one comment. And, and it's uh, certainly not an objection. I think it, 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 it's uh, a worthwhile group. Just that I think that the, the, the scope is, is quite particular. Uh, and I think that they may well find that they, they want to expand that scope. And I think we would welcome it if they, or I personally would welcome it if there was a if that happened okay uh, i think that's truly noted um it's a strange situation because i think it is a kind of follow-on from a previous cpg and the they will expand in the the remit to cover the areas that they've put forward but um that's duly noted but thank you very much uh, are we content to approve that cpg thank you very much um and on that note uh, that's the end of the meeting a close meeting and thank you all for your attendance today thank you.